Okay, this is part two of the 5.2 lecture. I'm going to pick up where I left off on problem number five, where we're going to verify this identity. And we have on this left-hand side, you should recognize this as a co-function identity. And on your identity sheet, locate the co-function identities. Um, pause the video if you need to pull out your co-function. And you should see that tangent of pi over 2 minus u is cotangent of u. So all of this that I have underlined here is equivalent to cotangent of, we have the variable x, in the identities it was u, and we're going to multiply it by secant of x, and we want this when we multiply it out to equal cosecant. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite each of these terms as sines over cosines. So cotangent is cosine of x over sine of x, multiplied by secant, which is 1 over cosine of x. So we use the quotient identity and the reciprocal identity. And the cosines cancel, and we're left with 1 over sine of x is the reciprocal identity. This is cosecant of x, which is what we wanted. So for this one, you ha have to recognize whenever you have a pi over 2 minus something, automatically look co-function identities. Okay, so this one is another one where something should stand out. Whenever you see a negative out front, um, then you're going to look at the even and odd identities. Pull out your sheet of identities and formulas and look for the even and odd. So cosine of minus theta, looking at the identities, this numerator equals positive cosine of theta, and 1 plus sine of minus theta is 1 minus sine of theta. We can rewrite using the even and odd identities as minus sine of theta. So I'm just going to replace using the even and odd. So you should notice when you have a negative in front of your angle, theta, t, u, x, whatever the angle is called, replace it with an even and odd. So cosine of minus theta is cosine of theta, and that's all over 1 plus sine of negative theta, and sine of negative theta is minus sine of theta, which is 1 minus sine of theta. Cosine of negative theta is cosine of theta, and sine of negative theta is minus sine of theta. So I want this here to equal secant of theta plus tangent of theta. So what we're going to need to do, <coughs> excuse me, is do a new trick, which is called multiplying by we're going to multiply this by what's called the conjugate. So we multiply by the conjugate when there's nothing left to do. So the thing that I like to do is multiply by the conjugate, which is the denominator but with the opposite sign. So we multiply it by 1 plus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. So we already have the written as sines and cosines. Nothing could cancel here. We want to end up with secant and tangent. So in order to get that, what I'm going to do is multiply by the conjugate. This is a new trick. Okay. <coughs> so in the numerator, that's going to distribute. And we have cosine of theta plus cosine of theta times sine of theta all over. Well, the denominator, this is a FOIL. So first, outer 1 times sine of theta then minus sine of theta times 1. You should notice that these middle terms drop out. And then you multiply the last, you get minus sine squared of theta. <coughs> so the middle term cancel. And I have 1 minus sine squared theta. So when we multiply by conjugates, the middle terms are always going to drop out because it's the conjugate. And we're always going to be getting something that introduces a Pythagorean identity, which can be helpful. So in the numerator, I have cosine of theta plus cosine of theta sine of theta all over 1 minus sine squared theta. And I know that 1 minus sine squared theta, I can use the Pythagorean identity. 
and that is equivalent to cosine squared or theta. So we'll get your Pythagorean identities and you can rewrite it. So I have my numerator is going to stay the same. Cosine of theta plus cosine of theta times sine of theta all over cosine squared of theta. And you can separate this into two fractions, the first fraction and the second fraction. So I'm going to do that. Some of you can just see the canceling that's going to go on. I can go directly to the canceling, but I'm going to write it as two fractions just to be sure. So cosine of theta sine theta all over cosine squared theta. And remember cosine squared theta is cosine theta times cosine theta. So this numerator cancels with one of the denominator and the numerator cancels with one of the denominator. So cosine cancels, so I'm going to put one over cosine of theta plus this cosine cancels with one in the denominator, so I'm going to put a sine over cosine. And one over cosine. So the secant, so that was good. Plus sine over cosine is tangent. So we have tangent to theta. And I am done. So this one, two new things that we did here. First thing, we saw we have a negative angle. When you have a negative angle, automatically go to even and odd and replace it with even and odd. And we're left with what we had here in black. And then nothing could be done there. There wasn't two fractions to add together. There was nothing that could be simplified. It's already in sines and cosines. And that's where you pull out the last trick, which is multiplying by the conjugate. And when you multiply by the conjugate, it's always the conjugate of the denominator, and it's always changed the sign of this middle term. So if it was 1 plus sine theta here, we'd make it 1 minus sine of theta. And that, the denominator will always introduce the Pythagorean identity, and the middle terms will always drop out if you do multiply by the conjugate, which is the opposite sign. And so then we had this, which replaced with the Pythagorean identity, and then it was just canceling.